Hi guys. So we just ended our meeting and I am with you here to uh, go through our homework and finish up everything that we didn't get to. I'm so sorry about the bad connection, but here we go. So I'm going to share my screen. That way you can see our assignments for today. So here is our ladybug. So our ladybug is going to share with you uh, our homework assignment. So again, just so you uh, remember, today is our pickup drop-off day for those that can make it. And I do have this for you, and it's in a little sheet protector, so it, it'll hopefully last you a while, and it's on cardstock paper. And I also printed for you a calendar that has uh, the next four weeks. So this week, uh, week two, week three, and then we call our fourth week our flex week, where we'll do our social studies. Uh, so that is going to be in your box folder in your drawer today if you can pick it up. If not, you can pick it up on the 25th, oh, sorry, the 15th of September, and this will just be available online for now. So today is Tuesday. For today, we're going to go through our daily packet. So that's this packet here. So daily packet. We already did this piece here. Um, and just remember that if I'm going a little too fast, you can uh, always pause and finish filling in whatever you need to. So you go at your own pace. I'm just going to go a little quick here uh, since we already finished this um, when we were together. So we filled in the blanks with our high frequency words. So we said, I like to go to school every day. You are my best friend. Can you please help me? The capital C. I live in a big house. This gift is for you. She has many toys. This question here was, where did you go? I went to the big house is how we answered it in a complete sentence. Uh, the next piece are our math facts. So eight plus two more makes 10. Eight and seven is a near double. So I know seven and seven is 14. One more is 16. Oh, <laughs> 15, whoopsies, I'm thinking eight and eight, sorry. I was checking my screen while I was doing that. 15, seven and one more is eight. Four plus four, there goes a double, eight. Seven plus four, seven, we can count on four more. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Eight and eight, that one is 16. That's our doubles, 16. This is our fact family and we filled in part of it when we were together. And that was our big numbers go last for addition. Big numbers go first for subtraction. And then we're just going to flip flop the four and the three are add-ins for the addition problem. So I'm going to go four and three make seven. Flip flop them three and four also make seven. And then for subtraction, I'm going to flip flop it here with our answer and what number is being subtracted. So if I have seven and I take four away, that gives me three. If I have seven and I take three away, that gives me four. Here is a word problem, which is good practice for today's math, which is all similar to this, word problems. There are five bees on the flower. Seven more bees fly to the flower. How many bees are on the flower? So I'm gonna draw five little dashes to uh, symbolize our five bees. So we have one, two, three, four. Ooh, you know what, I'll make it like a little tally mark. Five. Five bees, seven more join. Fly to the flower, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can go five and five makes 10. Add two more, there's 12 bees total. So that is our daily packet. So that was unit one, week one, day two. So that's our, our first thing in our, on our checkoff list, your daily packet page. Uh, we just completed that. The next is the benchmark activity of the day which is on your calendar. So that's in this booklet here. So government at work. So the calendar for today, it says, reread smoke jumpers, just six and seven. You don't have to read the whole story. And we're going to do two things. We're gonna tell what the main idea is. And then we're gonna answer this question. Why do smoke jumpers need to parachute in the fires? Okay, so I'm gonna to go to six, seven. So here's six. I'm going to reread here smoke jumpers. 
Have you ever heard of smoke jumpers? A smoke jumper is someone who is trained to fight fires in rough terrain, like mountains or other places that are difficult to get to. Smoke jumper, oops, smoke jumping was introduced in the 1930s by the US Forest Service. It was a way to get to forest fires quickly. Smoke jumpers are national heroes. Their jobs are hard and very dangerous. Smoke jumpers parachute from a plane. They land on a spot near the forest fire. Firefighting tools, food, and water are also dropped by parachute. Sorry, I'm on page seven. The men and women smoke jumpers get enough tools and supplies to last them for about two days. After that, they will get more. And I just realized that when we were together, I didn't read these captions. Um, which are at the bottom by the pictures here. So this one here says, recently there were about 7,000 forest fires in the United States just in the month of August. So we're uh, still in August and it's kind of, oh, this book was written a while ago, but um, it's kind of happening right now. It's August and there's a lot of fires going on, even just in California. So here, smoke jumpers usually work from June through October. So those really hot summer months, for sure, which makes sense. All right, so the questions again were, what is the main idea is the first part. And the main idea again is telling maybe in a sentence or two, what the entire piece that we just read is mostly about. So um, I really liked the introduction to paragraph three. I think that kind of summarizes this um, pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle um, these sentences and then I'll, I'll read them. Smoke jumpers are national heroes. Their jobs are hard and very dangerous. I think that's a, a, an okay main idea to kind of tell what we just read about. We read about how hard and dangerous their job is. And we read about how awesome they are. I mean, they put their lives at risks, at risk. <laughs> um, and you know, put out these fires. So I just uh, circled these two sentences and I wrote uh, m dot i dot. So it symbolize, symbolizes main idea, okay? Um, the next piece is why do smoke jumpers need to parachute into fires? So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to say, uh, I'm just gonna circle the words rough, and terrain, and I'll just say, um, uh, maybe I'll just draw like a little parachute just to kind of symbolize that that's my answer to the parachute question. Why do smoke jumpers need a parachute in? Well, they need a parachute in because there's rough terrain. Those places are difficult to get to. So it's okay when you're um, annotating and answering your questions to either rewrite your answer, maybe like in the notes section, when you need to do some writing but if you find it in the text it's okay to just circle your answer and maybe do little symbols and things that in your head you're like oh yeah i remember i did that little parachute because that means that's why the smoke jumpers parachute there's rough terrain and it's difficult to get to that's the way they get there by parachute and main idea we circled that so that means that we've done this part here benchmark activity of day on calendar Okay, next piece is the pamphlet. So the pamphlet, we did most of it together, uh, or at least the piece for today's homework. We did the word sort. Let me zoom out here so you can see it better. We did the word sort. So we had the stand, flag, short A, wet, chest, short E, this, him, short I, box, shop, short O, run, jump, short U, and then you guys uh, gave us a few examples of words that also have short vowel sounds. So we have apple, man, had, and umbrella. I'm open it up here because we had page two on our list today. And I have little doodles here to help me with the definition to these vocabulary words. We said gear, another word for that is tools. Rough terrain, we did that little jaggedy lines to symbolize uh, you know, difficult mountains, areas to get to. Citizens, I drew a little flag, a place, uh, people that live in a certain place. 
parachute, I did like a little umbrella picture. Fireproof, I drew fire and then a little slash through it. Colonies were what our old states were called. And then we filled in our blanks with these words. So a mask is part of the firefighter's gear. We are citizens of the United States of America. Smoke jumpers use a parachute to safely jump out of the plane. A firefighter suit is fireproof so it doesn't get damaged. We had 13 original colonies. The smoke jumper had to climb the rough terrain to get to the fire in the mountains. There's a little section here that has grammar. Leave this blank, we're going to do this tomorrow. There's another section here that has grammar. Leave that blank, we're gonna do that tomorrow. So you don't need to do any of the grammar today. Just spelling, vocabulary. This is the piece that you're doing by yourself today um, at home. You're going to write a sentence for five of your spelling words. So something I used to tell the kids when we were here is a good idea is to kind of just slap it open. That way you can see your words at the same time as the lines for your sentences. Um, so I'm not going to do this part with you because I want you to be creative and use five words of your choice. You have 10, use five words to uh, make sentences. I'm gonna make, what I'm gonna do instead is a little checklist of what I want you or you do on each sentence. I wanna make sure each sentence starts with a capital letter. I want you to make sure that each sentence ends in a period, or maybe if you're doing like a question or explanation, really excited sentence, or you have a question kind of sentence, you can do that instead. So some kind of punctuation at the end. Make sure the spelling word is spelled correctly. So these words are right next to you. You should be able to see it and spell the spelling word correctly because it's right there. And these are the words we're practicing for the week. So these are the three must do's for your sentences. Capitals, periods, the spelling word needs to be spelled correctly. The other words around it, as long as I can understand it, I'm okay with. Um, you know, if you if you need help, you can always ask parents or just sound it out as best as you can. I'm pretty good at reading whatever you're trying to make out there, so not a problem. So this part, again, you're on your own. I am going to collect these at the drop-off on September 15th, so do a good job with this because I really look at your five sentences each week. Okay, so your five sentences. So that's all of our Tuesday activities for Benchmark. Daily packet, Benchmark activity, in the calendar, your pamphlet, page one, which we did, page two, which we did, and page five, you're going to do your sentences. For math, this is the part that we got cut out a little, sorry. Um, we are going to go through our lesson. So I wrote myself a little note here on Quick Check, and um, I've added this to our Seesaw calendar that, um, and I didn't do it on this calendar here, but it's on your checkoff list. It says, if you need to, you can go to the video. Let me zoom in here for math. You can do the video on PowerSchool if you need to. It's always there and it's assigned, but you don't need to complete it. The quick check is required and it's for the lesson the day before. So not on Monday. So yesterday was Monday. We didn't do this yesterday, but today we are. So I'm going to show you how to get there. Um, you guys all had a sheet of paper on power school information that was folded in half that walked you through how to get to your math placement test that you took last week and everybody was able to get there because I saw everyone completed it. So if you um, use that sheet, um, it should walk you straight to there. So I'm gonna share how to get there just in case though. So when you log into power school and you go to Envision Math, uh, Savis realized, you're going to click on classes. You're going to find your homeroom class. And then you're going to see your assignment. So, so far, one person's completed it. So, awesome job to whoever already went in and did it. Um, if you click on 1 1, it's going to um, it's gonna look a little different on your end, but I'll show you what the quick check looks like. So, you're not going to get here this way. I have to go in a different way so I can actually show it to you. We're going to do a thing called quick check, and the quick check um, is a quick 
heck, it's only five questions. I'm gonna go to our lesson one dash one because we're doing the lesson of the day before. So today we're doing quick check one dash one. And I'm going to go to the digital quick check, which is what you have been assigned. And when you start it, it's going to ask you five questions. So this one says, which edition sentence goes with the picture? And if you're having a little trouble with some words there, you can push play and it will read the question to you. So I see a part two, a part of three. So two plus three, hmm, I think I kind of see maybe letter A will probably fit that picture. That addition sentence fits that picture. And then you would click next. You're gonna go next all the way until you get to number five. It's kind of a little tricky, I think, to do math on the computer. So if you need to use your whiteboard or your journal, something to write on, and then go in and just click on the answer, that's okay. So whatever works for you. So again, today you're doing quick check one dash one. So we will always do the quick check of the lesson the day before. So yesterday we did lesson one dash one, which means today you're doing the quick check for it. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the ladybug to um, just walk you through the lesson for today. So we said joining means put together. We had six ducks, two ducks join them, eight total. Three ducks, four ducks join them, seven total. So this is the part we didn't get to. And just remember that the video walks you through this little strip at the top uh, if you need help with that. So our first example here is already done for us, but it's a good idea to reread it to kind of see what they did. There are five frogs in a pond. You see the five there. Four frogs join them, which is addition. How many are there in all? In all is a key word, key words that tell you it's um, addition also. So there's five frogs, four total, oops, sorry, five frogs, four join them. Nine is the whole, the total. And I like that they added the whole part at the top of their charts there today. So here we, and I'm going to read the whole thing because yesterday I realized when I was doing problem solving, um, sometimes they throw in extra pieces that maybe we don't need. So good idea to read the entire thing before we start drawing. Uh, Jack sees some escape from more ladybugs. Now Jack sees 10 ladybugs. How many ladybugs are in the first ladybugs? Ooh, this one's a little tricky. So this is um, what I read. Jack sees seven ladybugs. seven little circles to symbolize my seven ladybugs. So I have my part seven so far. Some more ladybugs join them. We don't know how many more join them. So we actually don't know this part yet. I'm gonna put a little mark there for now because I don't know how many join them. What I do know is that there, now Jack sees 10 ladybugs. So 10 is the whole. So the question is not asking seven and then 10 join, seven plus 10. The question is saying, how many ladybugs joined the seven to get all the way to 10? Seven plus what gives us 10? So I can go seven and then I'll just count on and draw eight, nine, 10. Okay, so I just had to draw three ladybugs. Three is my answer because the question is not saying how many total. The answer is, or the question says, how many ladybugs join them? Three join those seven ladybugs. How do you find the sum in a joining story? Uh, you find the sum, we talked about this is the answer, by adding the two parts. And then later on, we'll even get into more parts than two, adding whatever the parts are. Okay, I'm gonna go into the independent practice. So this is where you, it's a good idea to pause and actually try this for yourself. Um, you know, really read it to think about if it's asking, uh, you know, how many in all are they joining? Or if it's asking, there's this many, some more are here, this is the whole, what's the other part? Um, so here we go. Number three, Ben found six flowers. Then he found four more. How many flowers did he find in all? So this one is oof, a pretty, I think, simpler than number two, um, in my opinion. So here we have six flowers. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Then he found four more. So six is one part, four is another part. If I add them together, six and four is one of my makes 10. It makes 10 equals 10 is the sum. 10 flowers total. Number four, Sarah drew some stars. So there's some stars. So maybe that's kind of like a key word there that it's like a question mark. I don't know. She drew some stars. Then she drew seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She drew 15 in all. So 15 in all, that tells you that's your whole. That's your uh, big number. So we have seven here. We're trying to figure out what plus seven gives us the 15 whole. So seven, and if I just draw up until I get to 15, it'll give me my answer. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is my other part. And again, the answer here is asking, or the question is asking, how many stars did Sarah first draw? So I'm writing eight as my answer, not 15, even though that looks like it's an answer, but we're answering the question there. How many stars did she first draw? She drew eight at the beginning. I'm gonna to go to the back side, which is our problem solving. Uh, so here we have Josh sees four clouds, then some more clouds come. We don't know how many more came, some more came. Now there are 11. We have four at the beginning. So four plus something gives us 11. So if I go four, and I'm going to draw up until I get to 11. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 11. So I'm going to see how many I drew. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I drew seven clouds to get to 11, my whole. So how many draw? How many more clouds had to come? Seven clouds were added to make 11. Okay, number six, some ducks were cracking outside. So I'm gonna draw just a little part, part, here, part here to help me. So I'm gonna do some ducks, I don't know how many, were attacking outside. Five more ducks began to crack. One, two, three, four, five. Did five little dashes there. Two of these begin to buzz. Now there are 10 ducks quacking. How many ducks were quacking before? Okay, here's the thing again that is adding extra information that we don't need. We don't need to know how many bees are buzzing because the question is asking how many ducks were quacking before. So I'm at five and there are 10 total. And just me knowing my doubles, I can think, okay, five plus what? makes 10, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So I had to draw five extra little dashes there to make five plus five makes 10. So the question is not asking again, you know, what's five plus five, is it 10? That's not what it's asking, it's saying, how many ducks were cracking before? That's um, this part here. So there were five ducks cracking before, which gives us our letter B. Okay, the last piece is write a joining story about the ladybug. Use pictures or words, then write an addition sentence. And instead of drawing a picture, I'm actually going to use the picture they already have here because it's, I think, broken down very nicely. I'm gonna do an addition sentence using the ladybugs on the leaves, and then the ladybugs that are walking there are the ones that are going to join them. I'm gonna kind of go like this. So I'm gonna say there are one, two, three, four, five, six ladybugs on a leaf. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ladybugs. Join them. How many in all? Nine plus one more is 10. Take one away from the six that I added here. 10 plus five is 15 ladybugs in all. Okay, so that's the end of our math lesson. I'm going to go back to my calendar here. I'll go to both of them. Or you know what? I'll just go to this one since we were here first. So 
So for math, we, again, you can do the video on power school if you need to. It's very nice, the, the videos, how well they explain it. There's the quick check to do today for lesson 1-1. One -one. The independent practice we just went through today. There's no test today, so no test online. Work on iReady math lessons 45 minutes during the week. So it doesn't have to be today, but sometime during the week, try to get in 45 minutes. Um, and Friday, not Friday today, but Friday we'll practice math facts. For Espanol, uh, remember that you get to practice on your own. A good thing today is Seesaw is good. So you should be able to go into our virtual classroom, take a look at the YouTube videos that I've posted, um, play the games, watch the YouTube videos that are there as well with different songs and fun uh, ways to learn about your colors and your numbers and those three animals. Um, you can make flashcards, you can work on the packet. I think a good idea is to do maybe one or two pages a day in your practice packet, uh, which is this one here. And again, I will post a key today, so I'll have it ready today. Um, so it has a lot of fun sheets to do here to practice those words. Or you can do um, get your flashcards or your uh, little whiteboard section on the inside of your yellow folder. So however you choose to practice your Espanol words for today. Uh, reading, remember to read 20 minutes daily. You can do that by going into our virtual um, classroom and doing the little pink book has many options on there. You can just read a book of your choice. Uh, work on 45 minutes of iReady reading lessons during the week. So not all today, but sometime during the week, try to get 45 minutes in. And then completing a Lexia level during the week. So that is our homework for today. And that kind of checks us off here as well. So smoke jumpers, those are the activities on the pages we did. The pamphlet one, two, and five. So finish those sentences. Topic one, lesson two and also adding the quick check 1-1. One -one. Practice lesson one, colores animales and numeros. Um, and that is our work for today. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great rest of your Tuesday and this will be linked in our um, Seesaw under your homework assignments. Um, but for today, I will also email it just again because it's new. Let me stop sharing my screen here and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.